In the past, we've downloaded several different uh, ROM variants like AOSP, Lineage OS, and uh, one of the things that's been requested is to do a video on OmniROM. Um, some people believe that it's harder to build than others, and I do think that it is a little harder to port to than maybe others, but actually building it, just compiling it, works exactly the same way as every other version of Android. So let's take a look at how we do that. Um, as you can see, I don't have it installed on here. We're going to uh, we're going to work on that. So I've got my terminal, I've got my uh, file manager, and I've got my uh, web browser open. So let's take a look at uh, the process that we go through. So if you use uh, any search tool, like you can use DuckDuckGo or Google or whatever the case may be, and you just type OmniROM GitHub, and when you go to OmniROM GitHub first thing that pops up here is OmniROM Android. Uh, sometimes we talked about this in previous videos that sometimes it's called An OmniROM Platform Manifest. But this folder is what we need for building. And we see that there's different branches. In this case, uh, they're, they're already starting on Android 9.0. And 9.0 Android Pi is very new still, not quite ready, so we're going to uh, step it back to Android 8.1 for Oreo build. And if we look at the README for the instructions, what we see is uh, a lot of gibberish at the top here, which is important for later, but if you're just beginning, it may not make a lot of sense to you. And we get to this getting started, and it has a very simple set of instructions. There's only three set of commands to type in. But if you just typed in this command as, as you're just getting started, it wouldn't actually work. Now if you set up uh, for building Android like we had done before in Nugget with uh, Lineage OS or uh, we even did uh, Pi videos and several other videos, then you could just run these commands and they would function. But I want to walk through this as if you're setting this up for the first time. And uh, I'm, I'm reaching out particularly to new users here, uh, new to compiling, first time you're compiling, this is what you want to do, this is how you would do it. And notice that this process would work the same whether you're doing OmniROM, Lineage, um, you know, AOKP, AOSCP, all of these work the same. Okay, but uh, so just take the knowledge and work with that. But uh, we're going to walk through doing OmniROM and we're going to build for actually a phone that I have. Uh, the one plus one so we uh, we realize that we can't just type in this command and make anything work so what we need to do is go back to web search and search for Android open source project and we're gonna get to this page probably the first page that you'll get to actually will be the requirements here and I do want to point out the requirements for building uh, Android, you need a 64-bit machine, um, and you need 250 gigabytes of space to build it. This is actually uh, l just the maximum amount of space that you need, but if you have 250 gigabytes of space, you know you can build it. Likewise, if you're running Linux in a virtual machine, you need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or swap. So if you're not running in a virtual machine, you can actually build with less RAM. And if you are building a virtual machine, there's guides out there for, uh, you know, um, managing your threads and managing Jack, uh, the one of the build tools and Ninja and stuff like that. And you can actually build with even less RAM than that. But for the purposes of this video, I do recommend having at least 16 gigabytes of RAM just for your sanity and for speed. So what do you want to build on? You can build. Um, AOSP or Android or OmniROM or whatever the case may be with anything you want. You can use Windows and have a virtual machine. Uh, you can use uh, Macintosh um, OS version 10.10 .10 or newer. Uh, you can use various forms of Linux. If you want, you can build it on Red Hat Linux. I don't recommend it. What I recommend is that you use exactly what they use and exactly what they tested it with, which was Ubuntu 14.04 Trusty. And you're like, wow, that's really old. Yes, it is, but it still works perfect. That's what I've got installed right here, and it's going to perfectly build everything all the way up to Pi, no problems. So if you want a problem-free, first-time install, first-time compiling build, I recommend Ubuntu 14.04. 
Uh, it talks about some of the packages that you're going to need. Uh, most of this isn't too important. Uh, I do want to talk about Java Development Kit. All the Android applications run off of Java. Well, I shouldn't say all. All is a very inclusive statement. There are some exceptions. Most of the Android applications that are on your phone run off of Java. And so for that, you need a Java Development Kit so you can build them. And for Android 7.0 or Nugget and newer, you need OpenJDK 8. If you're doing Lollipop and Marshmallow, you need OpenJDK 7. So, now that we know that, let's look at establishing our build environment. So when it's time to establish our build environment, I want to once again highlight that they tested this build all the way up to the master branch of Pi using Ubuntu long-term service 14.04. So if you want a hassle-free installation, I recommend Ubuntu 14.04. At least for your first time. After that, if you want to use something newer, great, more power to you. So since we're looking at 14.04, What's the instructions for getting OpenJDK 8, or our Java Development Kit uh, version 8? And now, I've already done this on my machine, but I want to walk through it with you. So the instructions here are to download these three files. And then you follow these four simple instructions to install them. And I've done that in previous videos, but I've also done it a different way. And I want to show you that different way because the version of OpenJDK 8 that they're having you install is version 45. And if we look at mine, I'm using version 171. And I recommend that you get a newer version than 45 because I've actually run into several apps that you're building for Android that require a higher version of OpenJDK 8 variant. Okay. Uh, usually around like a hundred or something. <clears throat> so if you grab your uh, web browser, your search bar of choice, or whatever the case may be, and you just type in Ubuntu 14.04 OpenJDK 8 PPA. So that's a uh, personal uh, package archive, I think is what PPA stands for. And so this is a, a repository that somebody else put together to give you OpenJDK 8. And it's really handy. First one that popped up here, uh, right here, has two very simple instructions to install it. The first one is to add the repository itself to say, hey, I want you to add this to my computer's list of available repositories. So you just select it, center click into your terminal, hit enter. I've already installed this uh, repository, so I don't need to do that. And then you can apt get update to say, hey, I want you to uh, search for the latest version of every package. It's a little confusing. Update sounds like you want it to do something. And then there's upgrade where you actually do it. Update just says, get the latest list of what's available. Upgrade says, go ahead and download that upgraded material. So we've done that. Then literally all you have to do, if you go back to our build instructions, is just like for 15.04 and newer, you say sudo apt-get install openjdk-8-jdk. Punch that in. We'll hit enter. I've already got it. And it's going to say, yep, you're, uh, you're good to go. So now we have openjdk8 installed. But what if you already had something else installed like jdk7? It's really important after you install something like a Java development kit that you follow these two steps to update the default Java version. And so if we type in the first one here, we notice that I've already selected number two. And that's J Java 8 OpenJDK. Now notice the default was Java 8 OpenJDK, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to select this, but I like to select it just because. And I'll show you why when we do Java C. Notice that the default for Java C is still to use 7, but we want to use 8. So that's why I like to specify exactly which one I want to use. Then the next step that we would have to do is install all of these building tools. So we just put that into our 
uh, bar here and it automatically started trying to do that and it says hey you've already got the latest version because I've done this before but I just want to walk you through it and say hey that's what we got to do then there's instructions for how to do it with different versions and with Macintosh and that sort of thing and the next thing you got to do is download the source now in this case we want to build OmniROM we don't want to build AOSP but under this downloading the source page is installing the repo tool. Once again, I've already installed this. If we look, we have this bin folder already created. And if we look in that bin folder, you see I already have the repo tool. But I want to walk you through this real quick in case this is your first time doing this. You just grab this line right here to say make directory. And this is tilde is the reference for home forward slash bin. So you're like, hey, punch it in there with the middle click, hit enter, and it'll make that directory. And then you say, hey, I want to add to my path bin, and then the path. So I want, <coughs> excuse me, I want every time I type a command, I want it to check to see does that command exist in this bin folder. And if not, then go ahead and look in the normal places. Then, by using this line, you curl or download that tool, the repo tool, and you put it into that bin repository, or excuse me, bin folder. And finally, last step here, is you're going to change modify, or chmod, a plus x, which is fancy term for being able to be read and being able to be executed and you're saying this repo tool. Notice this repo is green and these are blue. Blue is for directories, green is for something that's executable. Um, if we look, if we do like ls, uh, let's look inside of uh, documents here. Notice there's some files in here and these are not green because they're not executable. You can't run them like a program. But by doing this command, this a plus x, we're actually making it something that's a command that can be run or executed. So, we are all ready to download the source. And if you follow along with like an AOSP build video, this would be the part where we would actually download, um, you know, the source code for building Android Open Source Project. But we don't need that. We are actually going to build OmniROM. So we go back to our OmniROM, and now we're ready to run this command. So the first thing we should do is we should make a directory and we'll call it Omni-O. And we're going to change directory CD into Omni-O. We look inside there, there's nothing in there. And we're going to paste in with our center click the highlighted text that we have there. We're going to repository initialize or initialize a repository here that comes from github.com, omnirom, android.git, branch of Android 8.1. Now, if this is your first time running this, it may error and tell you you need to set up your configuration. It'll give you the command right there that you have to type to add your, uh, add your identity or whatnot. Um, very simple and straightforward. Here we go. It's all ready. We are ready now to repo sync. And when I say repo sync, what is going to happen? Well, first, let's take a look. There's nothing in here, right? Well, at least it appears. That's because we're not looking at hidden files. So let's look at the hidden files. And we see, oh, there's this repo folder. So if we ls inside this repo folder, what do we see? We see some folders, and then we see this manifest.xml. So if we cat or uh, read through or display the um, manifest.xml file, we see all of these project paths, and then what it's going to happen? What's going to happen when we say repo sync is it says, "Go get these projects and download them," because we're going to use them to build OmniROM. So we type our repo sync, and it's going to start synchronizing this repository. Depending on your internet speed, this could take a very, very long time. Uh, in my case, it's going to take probably about two days. So for you, hopefully you have faster internet, and this will take roughly 4 to 11 hours. 
either way, good time to grab a cup of coffee or something like that. Um, you notice while it's downloading, if we go to the Omni folder, it's still empty. If we hit Control H, we can see our hidden file here, this repository. And all this stuff that's getting downloaded is getting downloaded into these project objects and projects and into these folders. And then when it's all done downloading everything, it's going to check them out and populate them in the folder here for you to see and work with. So if you start working with them, and you make changes and you mess it up, you can repo sync again and overwrite your changes and fix them all, which is really handy. But also you can utilize this tool to push things, uh, changes that you've made, and submit them as, as uh, ideas for change. And that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing today, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. So we're going to let this download, and uh, then we'll take a look at building OmniROM.